Have you guys seen my Rocket Raccoon plush? I can't find it anywhere. Kill all the characters. Hey, Chris, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, have you seen my Rocket Raccoon plush? No, no okay. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Have a good meeting. As I was saying, kill all the characters. Party. Hey guys, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. Have you seen my Rocket Raccoon plush? Okay, have a good productivity meeting. Party. Guys, I can't find Rocket anywhere and I've looked all over, but I gotta get to my interview with Erica Schultz, who's the co-writer of... <gasps> Revenge. Hey guys, I'm here with Erica Schultz, writer of Revenge, based on the hit ABC series. Now, before we get started with the interview, can I have my rocket back? You guys, thank you so much. No revenge today. <laughs> so, now this is based on the show on ABC, Revenge. What was it like adapting a source material that people might be familiar with? It was very interesting to try and find the voice of the characters. Uh, I had to binge on Netflix uh, for the show, and the television people, the producers, and Ted Sullivan um, specifically, were very involved in making the book, just making sure that I had the right dialogue coming out of the characters and the, the tone was set just for the TV show, because it's supposed to be in continuity, and it is. Speaking of which, in the show, I noticed that there is a fair amount of internal monologue. Was that something that you really tried to incorporate that kind of feeling of the show into it? We did. Um, every show basically opens and closes with um, a VO monologue from Emily, the main character. And we tried to do that. The book is one book, but we sort of broke it down into chapters. So we tried to have a little bit of that in each chapter, sort of keep it in line with the show. And so now we know the book is obviously about revenge. But if people aren't familiar with the show, what would you describe it as? Well, the show in general is about uh, a young woman whose father was uh, accused of a crime that he didn't commit. And unfortunately, all the people that sort of got together, this cadre of people that got together and uh, got him taken out, are now in her line of sight to get taken out. There are a lot of really complex characters. Is there a certain character that you were drawn to because of maybe their motives or what they were about? Um, Takeda is a very interesting character. He is her sensei, and we really delve into him in this book, and we really delve into how he motivates her to do what she does. You've worked with several artists in the book. Yes. But there is a very much a thematic feel color-wise. There's a lot of use of really saturated purples and reds. The artists were fantastic on this, and I believe it was actually uh, editorial and the artists themselves that, that more or less coordinated. Uh, but uh, I had nothing to do with the art, even though it's, it's gorgeous, so I, I'll take all the credit for the art, too. Perfect. Good. You heard it here first. You are a newer writer to Marvel. What is your comic book sort of origin story? I pretty much grew up reading Claremont and Byrne. You know, they had just epic storytelling between Dark Phoenix Saga and everything. I mean, just really epic storytelling. I love the idea of telling a story visually, whether it's in film or in comic book form. And uh, I've always, you know, written as a kid. I always drew and everything. And so to be able to start doing this as a career, I mean, it's like a dream come true. Now, if you had advice for young comic book writers out there who are also looking to get into the business, what would be your advice? Well, start making a comic book. You know, have a portfolio, but also think about original stories as well. I mean, everybody who wants to get in the business, oh, I want to write Captain America, I want to write Black Widow or whatever, that's great, but you have to show that you can tell a story just in general. That makes a lot of sense. So get out there and do it. Erica says so. She'll be watching you. I'm so glad that I don't have to avenge my Rocket Raccoon plush. Seek revenge for yourselves in stores this Wednesday, September 3rd. And now it's time for the Marvel Minute, where I give you 60 seconds of the most vengeful news in the Marvel Universe. Grab your lanyard. Spies from behind the lines at Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. have released a new look at Lucy Lawless and Nick Blood as Agent Isabel Hartley and Lance Hunter. Don't miss the full reveal on the second season of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. This message will self-destruct. 
countdown to the release of Disney Infinity 2.0 Marvel Super Heroes with a new exclusive character trailer every weekday until the game's release on September 23rd. Pre-order the game now and watch the full trailers linked at the end of the show. Big Comics hit stands this week. Just because he's on his way out doesn't mean he won't be put through the ringer. Don't miss the final trials of Logan, starting with The Death of Wolverine No. 1 by Charles Soule and Steve McNiven. The Watcher's death has all been building up to this, the dramatic conclusion of Original Sin with issue number 8 by Jason Aaron and Mike Diodato. Don't miss it. You never know who might be watching. What comics are you guys most excited for this week? Death of Wolverine, Original Sin, Revenge? Tell me down below and I will see you guys next time, True Believers. I'm Lorraine Singh for Marvel, your universe. Marvel, your universe.